This video is brought to you by the Sliping Founders Edition. Get help from our team in your pitch deck, your financial models, and your fundraising. Sign up with the link in the description. It's February 8th, 2010, and something subtle happens. So discreet, not many people notice, but it confirms the end of an era. And while MTV continues to exist, that small change is critical. This is a brand's capitulation to new tendencies. MTV marked generations, set trends, and gave us new ways of enjoying music. It also helped launch some of the music industry's biggest names, but now music purists repeatedly say that the brand is dead. But what does that really mean? Let's talk about MTV in this episode of Company Forensics. The Origins MTV's predecessor was Sight on Sound, a Warner Cable product that consisted of a music channel with concert footage and music-oriented content, but no original music videos. In turn, this channel was part of the Cube system, Warner Amex interactive cable television system prototype. Viewers could vote on their favorite songs and artists, win prizes, and interact with DJs. Think of it as a predecessor to interactive media altogether. But MTV, as we once knew it, was Robert W. Pittman's product, a visionary executive. Thanks to his expertise in the music industry, he had come up with an idea to create a network dedicated only to music. It wouldn't be any music channel. The total opposite, actually. Pittman knew he had to aim to be anti-establishment, anti-authoritarian, and have the under-30 audience at his grasp. MTV wouldn't be afraid of playing rock songs with the latest and craziest music videos. Its VJs would be young and cool, and the stages would have delirious backgrounds. Pittman even hired the Manhattan Design Studio to create the iconic logo. And it was the first step towards making history, but a rocky one. MTV is born. Ladies and gentlemen, rock and roll. And thus, MTV was born just after midnight on August 1st, 1981. It premiered with the song Video Killed the Radio Star by The Buggles. Those who remember the earliest MTV days could have thought it was a successful start, but besides an impactful first impression, which it was, MTV struggled. Music videos were scarce because no one made them because they weren't a thing. So they weren't many to pass around and the network had to repeat all of its inventory. The VJs often spoke for long periods between videos and yes, they talked about music, but it wasn't fun. And let's remember that MTV was a cable channel, which was a luxury back then. Not only that, its special personality threw off many of the more conservative cable networks. Craig Marks co-wrote the book, I Want My MTV, The Uncensored Story of the Music Video Revolution. And here's how he summarizes society's perception of MTV. They thought that MTV was a bunch of coked up rock and roll fiends, and they were right in a way. Facing a lack of public approval, Pittman began the I Want My MTV campaign. It was a fiery set of ads featuring rock and pop stars like The Police and Mick Jagger demanding their rock channel. If that wasn't enough, the channel expanded its catalog to include more artists and genres like rhythm, blues, and disco. And among these was Michael Jackson with his trend-setting videos. Jackson was obviously a hit, followed by other huge names like Madonna, and Guns N' Roses. Executives loved the numbers and fans loved the music, but it was more than that. It was a culture change. Record stores near where MTV was broadcast noticed an increase in these new artists' sales. In contrast, stores far from MTV saw little movement because radio wasn't broadcasting them. Marx even credits MTV with helping Bill Clinton gain political traction with younger audiences as he made frequent appearances on the channel. But though MTV had become a beacon for new talent, the network would only be dedicated to music for a short while. Subtle and not so subtle changes. Thanks to Pittman's ideas and the network's turnaround, MTV became the first basic cable channel to become profitable. Brands were glad to pay for advertising as long as the sales were rising, and they were. But there's a caveat we're gonna explore later. Tempted by MTV's success in 1985, entertainment giant Viacom bought it from Warner, and that's when everything started changing. Videos were now segmented by genre, like Headbangers Ball for heavy metal, Yo! MTV Raps for hip hop, and 120 Minutes for alternative rock. These segments did work. After all, they were the platform for other upcoming artists. Think Nirvana, Pearl Jam, and rap icons like Dre. But it marked a shift in MTV's identity. By 1987, the birth of other programs like MTV News, Remote Control, House of Style, and Club MTV showed that the network was willing to venture into dance, fashion, and games. Even Pittman, the one who helped MTV transcend, couldn't cope with these changes. He left in 87 after being unable to buy 
the network. Viacom's aggressive MTV expansion continued with its own awards, the Video Music Awards, a spin-off called the MTV Movie Awards, and the Europe Music Awards. So MTV was unstoppable, but looked beyond music to do so. MTV goes mainstream and hits the pop charts. In 1992, MTV launched its own reality show, Real World. It was a real depiction of young people's struggles with sexuality, drugs, depression, and partying. The show took the world by storm and further cemented MTV's identity as a vehicle for social topics and the occasional controversial episode, and occasionally music, let's be clear. There was music, and it was huge, with artists like Alice in Chains and Soundgarden. It also featured metal bands like Pantera and White Zombie and gangster rap like Tupac and Biggie Smalls. Videos had become events in themselves. Artists wanted to outdo each other, and renowned directors were eager to direct them. By the mid-90s, most of MTV's content wasn't about music. It was so distant from music that the network launched MTV2 in 96 to go back to its roots. MTV2 began just like the original version, but changed to genre-specific blocks and eventually yielded to reality shows and gossip, just like MTV. Take the teen pop craze of the late 90s. MTV knew it had to be a part of it. The Spice Girls, the Backstreet Boys, and Sync. These were huge, so pop video rotation increased and other genres saw less exposure. MTV opened its Times Square radio studio and launched Total Request Live. Thousands of screaming fanatics flooded the streets, but the show transcended music. Carson Daly, its likable host, delved into celebrities' lives and made the show more like a talk show than a music show. And it drew millions of viewers, but it also outlined the debate. Were music networks really about music? After all, MTV was doing all it could to survive as a brand, not as a music network, and the numbers showed. By 2008, MTV played only three hours of music per day, down from eight hours in 2000. Billboard magazine wrote, MTV has these non-music shows on for the sake of immediate ratings. There will always be that tension between the music industry and MTV when MTV doesn't support music. Reality is the new music. In 2008, MTV was losing its grip on music. TRL was canceled, with some blaming it on Carson Daly's departure, but in reality, TRL had degraded itself to pranks, celebrity interviews, and unlikable hosts that, more than anything, reflected MTV's entire identity. And that was because younger viewers had found somewhere new to enjoy their music, instead of their TV. It makes perfect sense. Music now came from computers, iPods, and downloading albums. So MTV rushed to replicate some of its successful products like Real World. In came shows like Teen Mom, The Hills, and even car shows like Pimp My Ride. By the way, up until 2017, this was one of the longest running shows in TV history. The reality show era had begun. Former MTV VJ Adam Curry told CNET that it was the best decision MTV ever made. Plus, he revealed some interesting facts. Remember when we said that in the 80s, MTV was the first cable network to show a profit? Well, music wasn't their primary source of income. It never was. But cringy reality shows seemed to work. In 2011, MTV was a $4 billion a year business. But it was fighting a losing battle. MTV had very little to offer against the new wave of consuming content. Instead of waiting for celebrity fashion and controversy at the VMAs, fans followed their favorite celebrities on social networks. And then, of course, there was the rise of YouTube as a platform for consuming music. Let's take Sweet Child of Mine by Guns N' Roses, a video made famous by MTV. In Guns N' Roses' YouTube channel, it has 1.2 billion views. No standalone platform could ever come close to competing with this. MTV's evolution had just been, up to this point, a struggle to survive. They had tried it all from rock to teen pup, from reality shows to more reality shows and whatever Jersey Shore is. But could it continue surviving? The death of music television. If you tune into MTV, you'll see hours upon hours of its star show, Ridiculousness, and other reality shows, but it can bore you quickly. And that's the problem. Every generation is different. Some remember MTV for Nirvana's legendary Unplugged concert, while others for Fear Factor and TRL. I remember it because of Jackass. Every once in a while, it's logical that someone asks, is MTV dead? And the answer is in its own history. As a music concept, it died in the 2000s. As a brand that epitomizes cool, some say it died around 2009, 2010, when it failed to reinvent itself. Especially when we see that MTV has tried several times to create apps, revamp its social networks, and capture more fans, but 
Which fans? It's certainly not the 16 to 24 year olds. They have TikTok and the attention span of a goldfish. So when you see this brand try to remain cool, we can't help but cringe. The revived MTV News hopped on the YouTube Music News way too late, and it only has 100,000 subscribers on YouTube, so less than us. Overhauled ideas like Teen Mom and Cribs have a moderate following, but they fight against giants like YouTube and Netflix. And so we return to where we started in this video. It's February 8th, 2010, and MTV removes the words music television from its logo. Now it's just MTV, a brand desperate to stay alive and to stay cool. Maybe that's the problem. MTV can't do everything at once while trying to be cool. It must decide what's it going to be, and cool certainly isn't it. Now, if you as a founder are facing a similar challenge when it comes to handling more tasks than you can, make sure to check our Founders Edition plan at Slidebean. Founders Edition is a one-stop shop for startup founders, and it will accompany you in this journey, from getting your ideas on paper to approaching potential investors. You can just go to slidebean.com slash Founders Edition to find out more. What do you think? Does MTV have to go back to music to survive? Can it go back to music to survive? Or is it just a zombie now? Let us know in the comments, and we'll see you next week.